since the conditions are met, to test a claim about a proportion, we can go ahead and test the hypotheses that we established in example one. So what we'll do in a second is switch over to StatCrunch. We'll actually conduct the hypothesis test itself. We'll generate a p-value, which in this case will end up being 0 0.0519. So that resulting p-value, which will be the result of every hypothesis test, is a value which we'll compare to alpha to make a decision about our null hypothesis. And then we'll write a statement about what that means in the context of our data or in the context of our problem. So switching over to StatCrunch, we want to test a claim about a proportion. So we'll select stat, proportion stats, one sample with summary. We'll type in our number of successes and our number of observations. In this case, we had 50 successes, 50 countries who won at least one gold medal out of the 85 who competed. And then we'll establish our hypotheses. So we already set this up that our population proportion, our null hypothesis says that's equal to 50%. Our alternative is a statement that it's actually greater than 50%. And we'll click compute to generate our p-value. So in this case, again, that 0 0.0519. So we want to take that p-value and compare it to alpha. So in this case, we could say that our p-value is 0 0.0519, which is less than alpha, which in this case is 0 0.1. So we reject the null hypothesis. Sorry. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that our population proportion must be greater than 50%. So we take the p-value, compare it to alpha. In this case, it's smaller than that value. So we're saying the probability that our results were due to chance are very small. So we throw out that null hypothesis. There's enough evidence to reject that statement and we conclude that p must be greater than 0 0.5 since that's our only alternative. So now we want to state what that means in the context of our data. So what we're saying is there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the majority of countries who participate in the Olympics win at least one gold medal. And then in this case, we also want to say something about whether the claim was supported or not. So the claim was stating that the majority of countries would win one gold medal. So we can say, in this case, the claim is supported. So since there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the pr proportion is greater than 50%, there's sufficient evidence to conclude the majority of countries who participate will win at least one gold medal. So we've taken this in stages, setting up the problem, generating our results, and then looking at what we want to state in our conclusion. But let's just provide a summary. So we already summarized what we need to get the process started. So let's summarize what we need in an appropriate conclusion. So what we need is a comparison of our p-value and our significance level, which is alpha. We need a statement about rejecting or failing to reject. The null hypothesis with proper notation. We need a statement about what that means in the context of the data. And we need a statement about what, for what that means about the original claim.
So the purpose of those last two statements are to make your conclusions very accessible to anyone. So that someone could basically skip to the end of your analysis and say, oh, what you're concluding is that the majority of countries who participate win at least one gold medal. The original claim was supported. So someone could read through all of the steps of your analysis, see your hypotheses, your p-value, how you came to those conclusions, or could just easily skip to the end of your analysis and determine what it is you were trying or what it is um, that you reached as your conclusion with this data. So look back at our results in example one. What we want to discuss is how could we reach a different conclusion? Or would it be possible to reach a different conclusion? So in this case, we had our claim. The claim was provided to us, so that forced our hypotheses to be the hypotheses that we used. We had certain sample data. So we had the 85 countries who competed, 51 at least one gold medal. We can't change that information. That's historically true. That's what actually happened. So we can't change our hypotheses. We can't change the sample data. We can't change the p-value. But the one thing that we can change, that we have complete control over, is this value for alpha, the significance level. In this problem that was provided to us, and in most problems it will be, but if you're conducting a hypothesis test from scratch, not just answering a question from a classroom, that, or that significance level is something you have to choose. So we have the possibility to change our results by choosing a different value for alpha. So let's repeat that exact same conclusion or that same process. But in this case, let's do it with a significance level of 0 0.01. So we'll let alpha equal 0 0.01 and see what that does to our conclusion. So with this new significance level, now we would say that our p-value is still 0 0.0519. In this case, is now greater than 0 0.01. which is our value for alpha. So now we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that P is equal to 0 0.5. So we conclude that population proportion is 50%. So in this case, changing that alpha value leads us to the opposite decision about our null hypothesis. So we'd be saying there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the majority of countries who participate will win at least one gold medal. So that means in this case, the claim is not supported. So by simply changing our significance level, we came to pretty much the opposite conclusion. So for this reason, our value for alpha needs to be selected before we conduct a test. If not, <clears throat> if not, we're introducing a form of bias into our results by forcing the results to come out to be the what, what we want to see. So in this case, we're not dealing with a very serious issue. How many countries win gold medals? Is it the majority? But if we're talking about a more serious situation, for instance, a tobacco company doing research on the effects of tobacco and lung cancer. Well, that's a more serious situation. And if there's the ability for them to manipulate their results to get something that they would rather see, a conclusion that's more favorable for them, well, we need to be aware that there's the possibility that could happen. Or similarly, um, if we have a pharmaceutical company who's developing a new drug, they start going to clinical trials, they are obviously very invested in trying to demonstrate that their product works. So if there is the possibility that they could manipulate those results or bias their results at the end to get that uh, result that they're more interested in seeing, we have to be aware that's a possibility. We hope that it doesn't happen, but it's something that you need to keep in mind and something that we need to be aware of when we conduct tests. This value for alpha has to be selected before conducting any tests.
So we choose alpha, then generate our p-value so that we're not biasing our results by choosing a value for alpha that lets us come to the conclusion that we want to see. We have to let the data lead us to that answer. We won't want to force or bias those final conclusions.